Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gary Neville podcast with Jamie Carragher this evening from Etihad Stadium, Manchester, where the rain's falling and we're all trying to absorb, Gary, what's just happened. Yeah. I mean, that was that was intense, wasn't it? It was. It was it was exhausting, actually, just to watch it and the just how a big game should be. Obviously, a dramatic ending, a brilliant first half, a real toil in the second half for Arsenal defensively and for City on the ball, but they get there in the end, City, and just... I wouldn't say burst Arsenal's bubble because the, you can't really with the effort that they put in. But it felt like a big moment, didn't it? City getting a goal. Yeah, it did. I just think it's a, you talk about the two points. We know how, how vital and, and how small the margins are, but I just think psychologically to be at that end with your supporters, your coaching staff on the pitch, celebrating that win against Manchester City. I mean, we saw it, didn't we? Late on in the game, when every time Ryan made a save, all the players were on top of him, uh, you know, congratulating him because they knew how close it was and how vital it was and. I think that's an uh, yeah. I think it's a really big goal from John Stones. Do you, do you think it will be possible when the dust settles, and that will take a while for Arsenal to take out of this real pleasure and joy, or is that just too scarring a moment at the end? We've both been there, haven't we, in these types of sort of scenarios where it's a bittersweet feeling, where you think we've put in an enormous amount of effort, the commitment, the quality, the concentration, defending everything that we've done. And you would have expected City to score in the second half. I think both of us would have said City will score a goal. Um, so they'll be in there feeling like proud and, you know, there'll be a togetherness in there and a spirit that will be fantastic. But they'll also be in the back of their minds thinking, what does that mean ultimately against this Manchester City team? Just because of the fine margins that Karen mentioned. But look, they've got the, the bulk of the race still to go. The biggest battle still to come. Um, and they can take a lot out of that. What what they are doing at this moment in time, Arsenal is impressing us enormously with the way in which they apply themselves. Set piece wise and defensively, they're a joy. And um, today, similarly so in the second half. I, I think the frustration, I think if it was an Arsenal player myself, was yet yeah, a half time you take that. You know, if you say, OK, City going to get one goal, you, you'll come away with a point. I think they've all signed for that. But Man City didn't look that threatening. I never really felt, really, when I was watching that second half, City were going to score. I mean, there was a lot of shots outside the box from defenders, centre-backs, Diaz on the ball, Akanji a lot. And they were fantastic. The tactic of going to the back five, the four in front, it definitely worked because the goalkeeper was really good uh, second half, but it, 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 there was no real big chance until the one from, comes from Stones and he puts it away, an open goal. But I just mentioned at the end of commentary then, John Stones is rolling a title race with uh, Manchester City and Liverpool all those years ago when he cleared one off the line. Uh, that got Manchester City a victory in that game. This one gets them a point, but you just you just think again, could that be a you know similar name again? We're talking about John Stones at the end of the season deciding a title. It felt like a defining last few minutes. I think you said that on commentary, Peter. You just felt like you were watching something monumental last season. We were watching this game towards the end of the season and feeling that could Arsenal go and get that win? Could Arsenal win here that would then shift? Pep Guardiola off the top of the league and stop this sort of this run of titles that they're on and you need to do something pretty special when you're chasing and hunting down someone like Pep Guardiola and that was nearly something remarkable today from Arsenal to see out that second half and win 2-1 that would have been you think of sort of all those great Arsenal victories the ones at Old Trafford Will Viltor scored at Old Trafford and Overmar scored at Old Trafford those Arsenal fans in that far corner will have been sort of going home tonight thinking this is it that's the big step that we needed to make. And they may not still, you know, they won't be disappointed tonight, the Arsenal fans, from a point of view of thinking disappointment in their team, but there'll be something in the back of their minds and in our minds thinking, have you let them off the hook a little bit? And it's ridiculous because there's so far to go. But when Jose Mourinho came to England and he changed the dynamic of, you know, you can't go behind this team because they're ridiculously consistent. It's what happened in the first two seasons. He just lifted the standards. And Pep Guardiola's lifted the standards to a point where, what Liverpool had to do to win a league title was off the scale. It was ridiculous what, what Jurgen Klopp had to do at Liverpool to win the title. I, I, I just want to mention this in the first half as well, harking back to your days. I know you don't necessarily want to do that, but the type of game this was here, the type of game in terms of its physicality, inside the first five seconds, the game was stopped for a you yeah. know, collision of bodies right through to the 100th minute when they were still having a row. You, what, was that kind of old school? Yeah, the, there's a needle. I mentioned that. You can you can feel that. I, I can't wait for the return fixture. I think there's a real 
Neil maybe animosity and that wasn't there at the start when Mikel Arteta first got that uh, job because Arsenal were a threat to Manchester City you know Manchester City t sold them two players and those two players helped Arsenal actually challenged Man City a couple of years ago and I just that's brewing this animosity is going to keep sort of building you think of Manchester United Arsenal you think of what we had with uh, Chelsea all those years ago and, and there is you can't help it you, there's that feeling in your stomach that you, 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 you Good. there's a nastiness isn't there about yeah, it and I think it's needed I, I mean yeah. we all say people come and say I love, love it I love them coming together and I seen a needle on the bench at the end and you, you, that little bit of friction as long as it doesn't completely cross a line it just adds a little bit of something to the fixture and I think going forward now we've been talking about this fixture before the game saying the, the games are bored and there's maybe something a little bit missing I think we've got it we've had a great game we've had a little bit of needle and hopefully they get each other in a cup competition as well and we see more of it. Yeah, that, that's that's the game that sort of I wanted today. We mentioned it and alluded to it briefly before the game of a City goal could ignite something and make it a game that Arsenal have to come out and punch. And they did come out and punch. But I don't buy into this theory, mates. Maybe it's an old-fashioned old theory that you can like each other if you're going for a tie. I, I just don't think you can, honestly. I, mean, I know there's respect between Pep Guardiola and Arteta. They've worked together. And I know that there'll be admiration of Manchester City's football from Arsenal players and vice versa of what Arsenal are doing. But you can't like each other when you're no. about to basically commit to this. You know, you, they've got what you want and you, they want what you've got. And it's literally as simple as that. And you can have respect at the end of the season. You can say, well done to them, congratulate the winner. But whilst it's happening, you're in the heat of a battle and you're going for a title with each other. That game was important today, I think, for us because we want that fight we want that spirit between the teams we want the battle on the benches at the end where you can see that there's I mean Pep Guardiola and, and Mikel Arteta might like each other but there's definitely some animosity between the benches no doubt about that they don't like each other I think that I don't know whether it was Kyle Walker going over to the guy that he fell out with in the last season, the yeah. set piece coach. There's probably a few staff members who've swapped from uh, City to Arsenal going with yeah. Mikel Arteta and there's that little bit of friction there and at the end of the day it, if, Man if Arsenal don't get over Manchester City, no one's going to remember them in years to come. You know, they've got to win something big. They're good enough now to go and win a league title or maybe really go close to a Champions League. And that's why they'll know that. They, 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 the margins are so close now. And I, I'm totally with you. I mean, when we were playing Chelsea so often all those years in semi-finals and big Champions League, you hated them. You couldn't go. You go I love them now. I speak to John Terry Lampard. You see them. You, you talk about old stories and old games. But when you're there, you're so desperate. Not just to... I always say, you don't want to just win for yourself. You want them to get beat as well. You know, it's that feeling as well. So it's, you know, and, you know, long may that continue in this fixture. No, it's great. I, we shouldn't let this go. It feels like a lifetime ago, but Haaland scored his 100th goal today. Yeah. Uh, and it was a terrific, beautiful from Savinho, as you guys mentioned in the commentary. But another type of finish. I, it's hard to find new things to say about him, but we ought to because he's just scored 100 goals in 105 games. Yeah, and to be fair, when he came to England, we thought he'd score a lot of goals of that type, but because teams play so deep, so compact, you don't, you very rarely see him in that position where he can open up his legs and he can point towards where he wants the ball and then it just gets slid into him. It was absolutely fantastic from Savino, the first touch and then the play. Yeah, look, there was a period for about 10 minutes where City were absolutely breathtaking, weren't they? And you thought, oh, here we go. This is another level for Arsenal to have to contend with. Uh, and what I loved about Haaland today, it, it, it was like almost like an old-fashioned centre-forward. There, there, there was a header at the back post with Saliba late on where he got so high, he you know, jumped so high. What he did for the goal that you mentioned, there was a challenge before he scored the goal, actually, where he went for a ball that he couldn't really get. He just wanted to leave one on the centre-back. Now, that's what a centre-forward used to do in the 80s, 80s on. I remember watching Graham for Everton he'd leave one on the centre half in the first sort of 10 or 15 minutes you know that was always the way of the game but he was right up for it and I think the fact that so many people were talking about Saliba and Gabriel coming into the game and how good they were maybe they'd stopped him in the past and you see him at the end when they scored the goal and the goal goes back I think he gets booked for just barging into someone he was he was at it he was right on it wasn't he? I think another thing we don't probably give him enough credit for of course he scores goals and he's a great finisher but I think sometimes we think, oh, you know, he's physically he's so much stronger than maybe the players he's playing against, or he's playing for Man City, he gets lots of chances. How often does he go through on goal and miss? Mm. He, every time he goes through, he just feels like he scores. Yeah. You know, his actual finishing ability is absolutely out of this world. Did you think that, um, obviously, John Stone scores at the end and he's a Pep Guardiola substitute, so you can actually say that he found the answer to the actual problem that he had. But I was, I mean, we were both surprised by the fact that we have this 
obviously everybody thinks that Pep Guardiola is a genius and that he has an answer for every sort of problem that he faces in a football match. But he didn't seem to have an answer in the second half to the problems that Arsenal were causing him by that 6-3 formation. No, I, I, I listen. I don't listen. He got it right because John Stone scores. He just happens to be in that position where the ball drops. But I just couldn't believe how long it took to bring Phil Foden onto the pitch. And then when Phil Foden came on the pitch, he wasn't in the position where you'd want him, which was on the edge of the box, maybe to try and get shots away. I mean, I, I, I was flabbergasted how long the back four stayed on the on considering Arsenal uh, didn't even really have a striker. And I can understand Pep. Not making a change at half-time because he's not quite sure what Arsenal are going to do. Then you see it. It's a back five. OK, they've got no one up front. They're going 5-4. I couldn't understand why he left the back four on so long without you know just bringing players on. But listen, as I said, the substitute got the goal for him, so he'll, he'll be pleased with that. How are you feeling quickly then about the title race? <laughs> uh, five games in, you're backing Arsenal, I know. Yeah, uh, I... I backed Arsenal at the start of the season because I just felt as though when a team's hunting you down, eventually they get there more often than not when they're getting closer and closer in Arsenal. I thought today felt like a monumental, defining moment in this journey that Arsenal are on of trying to get to a league title. You know, Two seasons ago, they quite simply fell apart in the last 10 games. Last season, they go so close and then you think, right, OK, they're learning, they're maturing. And some of their play, by the way, in the second half, not just the defensive play, but... You know, you think of sometimes you used to admire the old Italian teams or the old sort of, if you like, teams in Europe that would be able to get through and waste time and do things that frustrated the, the life out of you because they were so experienced. So they demonstrated that in the second half and just didn't get over the line. So, look, I, you know, it's nothing to do with wanting Manchester City to not win the title or Arsenal to win the title. It's in fact, we're effectively neutral with these two teams. But you just think today and tonight where will we be in April and May with this game? Will we be talking about going back to that final minute uh, and what happened with the John Stones? Or will we be thinking that City win the title by one point and that that moment determines it? It's ridiculous because there'll be drop points and there'll be mistakes and there'll be lots of victories before the end of the season. But it is that type of situation when you're up against Pep Guardiola. It makes you feel that way. And there are other teams, Jamie. You're allowed to mention Liverpool, who were top this morning. How are you feeling about the title race? Yeah, I think uh, I think it'd be a little bit similar to last season where Liverpool are just slightly behind these two teams and uh, you know improving and looking to maybe really go for it next season. And you know you know the manager knows everything about his squad and he looks exactly who he wants to bring in because he he hasn't really bought anyone. I'm just trying to think. You know, Keyes is more of a squad player. They brought a goalkeeper from Valencia. That's more for next season. So it's still last season's team. I still think Liverpool are the third best uh, team. But going back to these two, I just still always when I look at the squads and I just look at the, that attack Manchester City have got. And, you know, De Bruyne doesn't play today. I know Odegaard doesn't play, to be fair, as well. But I just think they've got a little bit more in those attacking areas. And, you know, I... I I just think they've got a little bit more. And if Arsenal would have held on, it would have been a set piece goal. And we know they're amazing at set pieces. We saw it last week, they win the game at Tottenham. But you can't win the game on set pieces every week. You know, sometimes it's got to, you know, the quality of your players or the finishing. I just think uh, Manchester City have the edge there. It is just worth mentioning the reason we were watching the second half like that was because of the sending off just before half time, which obviously completely changed the dynamic of that second half, which is disappointing because we wanted to see the game 11 v 11. We didn't want to see Rodri go off either. But I think that, um, and I can, Arsenal will make the point, I'm sure, around the Doku, you know, kicking the ball away. They're absolutely right to. I think we made it at the time. I think Michael Oliver had as difficult a first half as he will have for a long time because he's, you know, quite simply the number one referee that we have. But it was a tough game out there for him in that first half. You could feel the heat coming upon him. But I did think that the sending off was a sending off just based upon the fact that at the start of the season, Again, I'm not quite sure why they've toughened up on this rule. I sometimes think they create a problem for themselves at the PGMOL or it is the sort of is it IFAB, the referee's body, when they create. The, I'm not sure there was a big problem with kicking the ball away, because of the fact now that we can add time on. If you kick the ball away for 20 seconds, I mean, I'm not saying that if it's ridiculously kicking it away, which you know, I don't know. I don't know what you think about it. Now this this almost like sort of like zero tolerance towards kicking the ball away. Even if it's not nudged away a little bit, it's delaying the restart. It's not just kicking the ball no, away; it's actually delay, but, delaying it. But are you, what I'm saying to you, were you getting, were you getting sort of like wound up about delaying restarts last season? Obviously, I was, it wasn't something no. that was like really bugging me as a sort of commentator on a football match. So they've almost in some stamped out down on this, and Arsenal have obviously found that this season, even Declan Rice in the second half got yeah. booked for it. So it's something that's not going to go away, I think, as an issue. But 
Trossard was silly. I mean, his first one's a, a straight yellow card. The pull back, and then he knows once he kicks it away. So, I mean, just worth mentioning that, I think. You, you thought it was a red card, did you, Trossard? Yeah, it's daft. He's pulled someone's shirt back. Listen, that, that can happen in a game of this magnitude. You're worried about someone getting away from you. But once you're on a yellow card, I think it was one of them that... You say they've, they've stamped down. It's probably one of them in the past where you think the whistle's only just gone. I can get away with it. I, I think Trossard knew what he was doing, but he thought the whistle has only just gone maybe a second before I can get away with this one. But the way he kicked it away as well, I mean, it's still going. You know what I mean? He just put his foot right through it. So, you know, it was, it, it was daft. And that regulation or change in interpretation has now cost Arsenal four points in the Premier League. The game against yeah. Brighton and yeah. here today I mean listen that's a facile interpretation the game might have played out differently who knows but on the face of it they have led two games mm -hmm. had a player sent off and conceded an equaliser was there any City player right next to Trossard that even if he'd just almost gone to kick it and missed it and left it there that City would have had to have still gone and sort of fetched the ball I don't think it was because sometimes you can just leave the ball and actually it's still sort of if you like buy you a bit of time to get back in but anyway yeah just a uh, I can't remember if it was a City player near you. No, no, but I, I don't. It was always one of them that because it was so close to half time, it was always going to go in the box. It wasn't like City were trying to like, we're going to, and he was going to be out of. He wasn't even out of position. It wasn't. You know, sometimes someone does something, you think, oh, I'm out of position, or or Declan Rice does it because he's trying to stop a quick free kick in there, and he's behind the ball. It was never going to be that situation. So I've got no sympathy with him at all. I had a bit of sympathy with Declan Rice. I can understand it from the official's point of view, but I had a bit of sympathy with him and thought, could the official have found it, you know, a different way to sort of handle the situation? But not with that one. That was absolutely daft. And I think you said on commentary, Mikel Arteta, sort of give him a hug when he came off. But I think when you know you take the emotion out of the game and he's going back through the game, maybe tomorrow at the training ground, he'd be like, what are you doing? Absolutely daft. Yeah. Take a while to take the emotion out of that game, won't it? It will. It, it was, was a really good, emotional. It was a, good one. It it was was a good belter. One. Thank you. Thank chaps. you, Peter. Enjoyed Thank that. You. Thank, Thank you. you.